All right, everybody, welcome to Mordred's Acting the Fool, episode four. Today I'm here with Chris Contos, good friend of mine, many bands, verbal abuse, attitude adjustment, machine head, um, all kinds of other good times, Raider tailgates. <laughs> me and Chris have gone back a lot of years. He's the first man to ever introduce me to death way back in the day. And I'd like to say thank you, Chris, for being here. Oh, dude, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to be able to talk some stuff with you and uh, talk drums and history with you, dude. It's awesome. We go way back, homie. So talking drums. Yeah. Why do you want to talk about drums? Because I know that uh, your influence on my metal drumming, which is not really, I'm not really a metal drummer, but I've listened to you play and I've been like, there's parts of your songs I've struggled to play for years and still struggle. And Likewise. it's been a big influence on me. Sure. So what got you where you are today? Um, well, you know, as a kid growing up, I was, I was kind of raised in the studio. Uh, my dad was a songwriter, idol maker, producer, arranger. You know, he discovered the Shirelles. Um, you know, he goes way back. So, I, you know, he worked with Dr. John, uh, you know, Rick Derringer. You know, so uh, John Hammond a lot, you know, so um, I got I was kind of raised in the studio, you know, and at first when I was a kid, I thought I was going to be a bass player because I've always been enamored with bass players. And I I'm one of the drummers out there in the world that feels that like bass players run the stage, you know, a solid bass player runs the stage. Bass and drums. Bass and drums. But for me, the drummer really is given the the latitude to go the fuck off because there's a solid <laughs> bass player on the stage yeah, stomping yeah. that shit out, right? So I always thought I was gonna be a, a bass player, but drums just kind of happened at about, I would say seven, eight years old. I just started banging around on, on drums in the studio and then ended up with a kit. And then I was that kid that my, my stepfather would bring up on stage with his band when they would do high school uh, dances or parties. They'd be like, let's bring Chris up to play Jumpin' Jack Flash by the Stones, oh, yeah. right? So I was that little kid, right? Like, oh my God, the little kid can play. So um, that's kind of how that all started. And then just um, discovering records that were kind of discarded. My mom, after my mom and dad divorced, uh, he can, she continued to get uh, all my dad's promo records. So I would find these, like she would grab Boss Gags and and you know whatever and i was grabbing like alice cooper killers or black sabbath and she was or the first kiss album you know so as that developed i'd be out in the garage trying to you know rock this thing and it just kind of became the heavier side of stuff was really appealing to me i was a super van halen fan when i was a kid oh yeah you know mostly i think what changed my whole trajectory was going to see led zeppelin in 77 and uh, I was so freaked out by John Bonham when I was a kid. And, um, I'm envious of that, couldn't be able to see that show. You know, my, my, step, <laughs> my stepdad was like a master at moving around gigs, uh, around concerts. You know, he was a short guy and he had me in tow. So he'd be, he could be like, little kid here, look out, little kid, little kid. And we'd like move right up to the front row. Oh, right. You know, and so when Zeppelin played, my whole thing was I wanted to see John Bonham up close. So he knew where they would walk on stage. And we went over to the side stage and they walked out. And when they came out, John Bonham looked right in my eyes and went, oh, little kid. <laughs> like, and that, awesome. mo <laughs> that moment for me locked me into watching him for the rest of the show. Wow. And just I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. A forever moment. Yeah, a forever moment. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it kind of set my course more as uh, an entertainer than a musician because I've always been more enamored with what you're giving and shaking asses in masses than being <laughs> overly knowledgeable about rudiments, music theory and yeah. stuff like that. It's like, it's more heartfelt, you know, kind of thing coming just out of me. So that's kind of where the whole music thing started. Yeah. Combination of those two things. Yeah, it's great. You say Jumpin' Jack Flash. That was like one of the first songs I played in a band when I was a kid, uh, when I actually started playing in bands with kids. but. Like you said, Van Halen was yeah. a huge influence. Of course, you know, I started off listening to the Beatles. Same thing, my mom was a musician. Yeah. And uh, you know, when the drummers wouldn't show up for practice, hey, Jeff, play you know, Linda Ronstadt songs and stuff like that, yeah. whatever, and I'd just kind of fit in. But that was my introduction also. So we kind of, it's kind of funny that we both had a little yeah. bit of an I, I was in the studio so much as a kid that I would fall asleep 
underneath the piano. Oh yeah. And I, I even when I record nowadays, if I get into a studio, I get tired. I can yeah. sleep in that environment because I'm so used to it as a child. Yes. <laughs> Black couch. Yeah. Wood dials. You Music's know, blaring just, and I'm just right asleep. Yeah. It's it's comfort zone. It's a total it comfort, a total, comfort exactly. zone for me, man. Yeah. Childhood comfort zone. Yeah. Well, that's man meeting, uh, being able to have John Bonham look at you and say something. That's amazing. That was a that was a you know, a moment for me, you know, and I've always just, you know, I've been into like Billy Cobham and, and like, oh, yeah. you know, that's where I kind of stole my fast hands Modest stuff from. Orchestra? Yeah. You know, not as much like the jazz elements of it, but the, the mm-hmm. fast hands yeah. stuff, the long rolls, the, the China symbols, you know what yeah. I mean? Like what's that? Sound? Billy was the first one I ever heard play double bass. Me too. Was Billy Cobham. Me too. I mean, yeah. yeah. And it took years for me to finally throw down a double bass drum beat. Yeah. The first two, dr- you know, full straight ahead kind of double bass beats I ever played was, um, well, it's probably three songs. Kill the King okay. by Rainbow, um, Cozy Powell, uh, Motorhead's Overkill. Oh, yeah. And uh, Except Fast as a Shark. You know, and then with Fast as a Shark, I was, that's when I first was able to like separate snare beats from just bup do bup do do bup do do bup do to you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, doing yeah. that in there, that was like a you know light bulb explosion. Just yeah. your hand can come <laughs> off of that, like you know. Putting the ghost notes in there. Everything's found for me, really. You know, I mean that's why I, I tried to do that ten drummers thing on Facebook. You know, ten drummers that had a great influence on you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Over ten days. Oh god. Gotcha. I got to day ten and it was fucking nowhere near done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I had to do 20, no, I, I, you I know, get that. and just in, inspiration comes in so many different forms for me. You know, you know I want to I want to get off the beaten path of drums um, because uh, I, I really got it, uh, inspired also by you when you started doing BMX biking. Oh, yeah. And um, since then, I, I told you earlier, but I'm gonna bring up again on this thing is I, I got a BMX because I'm trying to melt and lose some weight myself. And um, Chris gave me some good advice, but he has some really good stories. Um, and I just wanted to click on the one because I was telling Chris about how I was speeding out on my pedals. And he was talking about how he first locked in. But I want to, I, I maybe you can share that yeah. first moment of that wreck you had <laughs> that you told me about. Oh, the wreck uh, where I hurt my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, the, the BMX progression kind of started after I fell into a coma in 2013. It was a chronic problem I had with two salivary glands. Uh, they were getting impacted because the valve under my tongue was opened. It wasn't one way, it was just open. So food particles and everything were washing into the glands and it became chronic. It's what kind of saw me out of machine head, what I, what I got sick with, with machine head. And it had procedures over the years, but it got really bad. And by the time 2013 came around, I uh, had been hospitalized many times over the years, but I had a thumb sized stone in one of, the, one of the glands and they had to remove both of them. And the surgery is from your ear to your chin. It's a huge scar. And don't see a scar. No. Well, the doctor, he said, look, he found out about the music thing. And he goes, I don't want to put a giant fucking scar on your face. You're prone to getting your fucking picture taken. You know, and I, it's going to be a fucking gnarly scar. I'm going to do this under your tongue. You know, and at the time, dude, I was super unhealthy. I was drinking and drugging really fucking hard, a little disillusioned with the music industry at that point. Um, kind of finding, trying to find my way out of it. Didn't know really why, but I was just kind of feeling done. And I went into this surgery, I was 339 pounds, really not healthy, and uh, fell into a coma. The surgery went sideways, I had swelling, blood loss, my heart stopped, all this shit. Man, came out of that, that dude. <laughs> yeah, came, came out of the coma five days later, and I was just fucking spurting BMX. I mean, I was talking about names from 83 and all these people I knew back in the day when I kind of left the sport. I really was kind of just around town kind of BMXer, but there was all my friends that were racing and going places with BMX. And then they were wearing casts and then they were on crutches. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm playing drums, you know, like, so it was this thing where I just left it behind. Get hurt. So I'm, I'm spitting out all these names from 83, my wife, Gwen, and my mom, tripping like what the fuck is he on about you know and the progression of BMX had changed so much that um, 2010 they had opened up the age groups by every five years 
back in the day, if you were 32 years old riding a BMX bike, you were a freak. Like, you know, you were a freak. Now, 40-year-olds want their shit back. You know what I mean? They're like, I invented this shit. Let me get in that helmet. <laughs> you know? So I found out that, you know, at that time, I knew that BMX had made it to the Olympics in 2008. And uh, I was stoked on that. So when I woke up out of this coma, I was just, I was hell bent on it. And the doctor told my mom and my wife, look, comas are weird. People come out of comas speaking French. People come out of comas fucking stipple artists who've never drawn a stick man in their life and now they're doing portraits. Weird shit happens to your brain sometimes and he's clicked onto this. He's 339 pounds or whatever. Get him on a fucking bike, we'll cast anything he breaks. <laughs> you know, he's working on a canned ham for a heart and high blood pressure, diabetes, whatever, you know, he's out of control. And it just started this seven month progression with me where I lost 126 pounds and I won the grand national title. I won, I won some nationals, I raced some state championships, tons of local races. And by the end of this seven months, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, winning the eight footer, which is like one of the hardest trophies to win in BMX. Wow. Awesome. So it started this, and it came with this great community of people and helpful and, you know, really generous people that came in the BMX community. So it locked me in. So I walked away from music for almost five solid years. So the last year I was racing, I uh, wanted to start racing a 24 inch bike, which is called cruiser class. I usually race 20. I built a bike, got on the bike first time at the track, went over something, f almost flipped over the bars, rode my front wheel down the back side of this obstacle, fishtailed, and at the very end of this wreck that I thought I just survived, slow motion crash, fell on my elbow and subluxed my shoulder. I just jammed it into the joint, which is like a subluxation, not a dislocation. And I mean, look, in five years I had five injuries, basically. It was, it's a blood sport, you get hurt. It's yeah. eight fucking guys my side like you just, diving you're into get a hurt. fucking turn. You're banging elbows, you're going 30 miles, 26 miles per hour into asphalt turns. It's fucking gnarly. Yeah. So there's been injuries. Every other injury I had had, I was like, shit, I got a race next weekend, or fuck, this blows it for me on these points. I've got to go somewhere else and get points now. When I did the shoulder, Jeff, I jumped up. Everybody said the first thing you did was you got up and you went like this. Can I drum? Like it never occurred to me before on any of those little wrists or knee or ankle or anything. This one made me go, oh fuck, I'm a drummer. You know what I mean? <laughs> And it, back home. You know, I thought I was going to be better in a couple of weeks. It was fucking eight months. And, um, you know, then the whole machine head thing kicked off. And it, it's now stretched into pretty much almost two years off the track. You know, so I'm, I'm getting back into it right now. Getting, I got new sponsorship and stuff. But oh, cool. uh, I take it super seriously. And it's, uh, yeah. it's super fun part of my life. And without BMX, I wouldn't have been ready to do the machine head thing. I I was ready to snap and go, and I was twitchy, muscle strength, and everything. You know what I mean? So oh, it, it really and your endurance, and, everything, oh, the weight loss, the health changes, all that stuff. Really, and you're playing long sets with them too. So it's the yeah. hour and twenty five, hour and thirty five minutes. Yeah. You know, it's we do still a lot. Man. Yeah, so you know, it's a it's it's a it's a test. You know, cool. it's a test. Well, that's but great, man. BMX saved my life, straight up. <laughs> Today's not great. I know it's, uh, when Josh Rosenthal got me into jujitsu, it was yeah. the same theme. And every time somebody, you know, rolls on your arm weird or cracks your leg or, yep. you, you know, I've had my ribs broken, I've been punched yep. in the mouth. I've had all these things happen, but as soon as something affects your way to work yeah. and your way to drum, you automatically have to back off. Oh, yeah. And that's always your, At your a DNA control level. is like, okay, I cannot go here no more because yeah. I can't stop drumming and I can't not work. So right. your sports that you choose for fun and for hobbies have to, you know, you, you get so into it and it's competitive and you want to just be oh, that totally. guy and you want to do it and, and it's fun. Yeah. But you also got to check yourself, especially being a musician. So Oh, hell yeah. That's just that's the way why it I is. Got, and you're getting old. Like, we're all getting old. <laughs> that's why I got out of training jiu-jitsu. You know, I turned Josh on to jiu-jitsu in 94. Yeah. Came, home yeah, from the, <laughs> came home from the Machine Head Biohazard Tour. Biohazard brought a jujitsu specialist out on the road, uh, Canseca Nunez Gracie, and um, learned all this stuff that I'd never known. And I had done martial arts throughout, you know, time, all kinds of different ones. 
And I came home and I was choking Josh and bending his wrist and putting him in the, look at this, he's like, ah! You know, and then he, he found out that um, Wally J was in Alameda. Oh, yeah. So we started going and seeing Wally J. Mm -hmm. But I picked up a lot of stuff fast and then I was good. Cause I was done with reaching back and having the wrist or the yeah. thumb, yeah. or like you said, the collarbone cause the you know, dance of the white belt. Mm -hmm. You're all scrambling and yeah. getting kicked in the mouth and it's just a <laughs> mess, right? So that's kind of why I backed off of jujitsu, like you said. You know, yeah. if it gets in the way of working or or getting your bills paid or musicianship or just you know, it, it, I just back off. You know, yeah. And it, like BMX is the first time I didn't do that. You know, yeah. in my whole life. You know, it was like I'm doing this, and if I get hurt, I get hurt. But the shoulder scared me. Yeah, <laughs> it no definitely doubt. scared me. Well, you know, um, thanks for coming. Of course. Thanks for being on our show. Yeah, man. And uh, we got a little treat for you. Uh, me and Chris are going to play some drums. Uh, we're just going to run through some songs that we both play in different bands of ours. And I uh, hope you enjoy everything. Yeah, it's going to be fun to kick ass. Mr. Chris Contos. <laughs> 